Okay, so this is a video I took with the inside of the New Holland, and this uses the Trimble. There you see the cross strike error is 0.21, but Ag Open GPS says something completely different, of course. So, if you were a marketing team, which number would you want to show to the user? So the thing does drift back and forth, two, three, sometimes four inches, as it uh, changes roll and pitch and that sort of thing. But what's interesting is that the cross track error doesn't say that. Of course, that open GPS never lies, so it just shows you how far off the line there is four inches. Here it's 0 0.61, 0 0.45. So I'm just using the. Uh, um, and you can see it in the, in the seating track as it goes. I mean, the cross track error always says it's less than an inch. But you can see the thing wave, and you can't see four inches over half a mile. But it is interesting that it does move four or five inches, yet the cross track error says much less. So I thought I would take this video. Someone can explain this to me. Awesome. Okay, so this is a video of it just bombing along in the field or doing some, uh, this is stripped wheat, seeding canola into it, and now I'm just rolling it. Obviously the camera is out to lunch. <laughs> so here I are zipping along and you can see that the yaw is quite stable. Uh, this is the GPS from the fixes and then of course the correct value and the roll. We're leaning over four, four or five, sometimes six degrees here on the side. And uh, here's the tracking error. Now I know Andrea said that, you know, it, it had to be less than an inch. Well, it's pretty darn good. I remember that there's a really big heavy roller behind this two-wheel drive tractor. And sometimes it's the roller that drives the tractor, not the tractor that drives the roller. So once in a while you'll see it going up some of these like little hills and stuff. It'll, it'll pull the back of the tractor sideways. Um, you can't blame the GPS for there it was one. It's just as we came up that hill. Um, but all in all, it hangs in there really, really well. I changed the fusion for the corrected to be much faster. Um, the IMU on the roof is working quite well, except it seems there is some delay. So if you make the, the fusion too long or only get the GPS corrections for a short amount of time, then the heading you're going is what was probably about a second ago. So if it's nice and fast, it seems to work pretty good. And I also added a if statement so that if you're turning sharper than two degrees, then the fusion happens much quicker. This is using, um, what's it called? Roll in the Arduino and it's roll divided by eight and it's added to the steering angle. So the more you slope one way or the other, then, uh, it adds steering angle to compensate for the fact that you're on a side hill. You got to turn sharper to turn uphill if you want to go straight. And like WW said, that generally works quite well. And as you can see here again, it works really, really well. Here's the seating track. And like I was showing you earlier in the video, I don't know if you can see it here, but once in a while you can just see a bit of a nert, even though the cross track error says that it's really really low but it isn't because you can see you can even see it in the video here you know there's that three or four inch tiny bit of curve if you look really hard you can see it so yeah this is a, a slopey hilly field and man if it can drive straight on this it can pretty much drive straight anywhere so i'd say that works pretty damn good again Here's the steering wheel, it's not moving a whole lot. Nice and quiet. This is a piece of boat roller, and it's just a piece of rubber, it's a couple inches in diameter, and just sawed off a piece of donut off of there, and then just stuck it on a brass bushing and stuck it on the end of that uh, fidgets motor. The fidgets motor is awesome. It's got lots of power, it's really fast, and uh, that works really, really well. What else can I say about this? 
I was thinking about that using the integral to correct, like now it's four or two, whatever, uh, to correct that little bit extra. I haven't done it yet, but I still think that's worth a try just to give it a little extra little degree or so. Here we are whipping around by the trees. You can see we went from minus four to, it's like six, seven degrees in this side slope. And it hangs in there pretty darn good. Oop, never use a laptop with a hard drive in it. You go over bumps and of course it freezes. But, there you go, it works good. Anyway, um, I'm not sure how to summarize all what I just said, but I uh, keep learning a, learning a bunch, and this is, this is really rocking it. Better than that really expensive Trimble and Nav unit in the four-wheel drive. Four-wheel drive is a whole different animal. It's much more complicated because the articulation point moves sideways. I haven't done a four-wheel drive, but um, looking forward to doing that too. Anyway, thanks. One thing I forgot to mention is if I set zero degrees on the Trimble and I come along with the Outback and set it for zero degrees, it's uh, 0 0.722 degrees out. So if I follow that line exactly and hit A and then B with the Outback, it comes out to 0 0.722 degrees, which is kind of interesting. thought I would mention that. I know there's some discussion about why don't they match up. Well, they don't because it's how they determine their angles or how they do the UTM conversions. Anyway, just wanted to add that.